Greetings and salutations, my beautiful people, and welcome to the Kanekura Show, where I always have to do the dirty deed of deciding whether or not the game deserves to be slaughtered or salvaged. And let me ask you a question, do you ever have those days where you just feel like playing a game that's made by French people? Rayman! Rayman! Rayman? Rayman. Do you know what he is? I don't know what he is. In fact, no, actually, no, I do know what he is. He's one of the most French things I've ever seen in my life. Take a man, lose the neck, lose the arms and legs, you don't need them, Give him a scarf that somehow stays on despite no neck, and then pop on some easter egg shoes, and voila! You have one of the biggest platforming juggernauts of all time, with like 50 ports of Rayman 2, one of the most loved 3D platformers of all time, and two incredible 2D reimaginings of the original formula released very recently, that met with universal critical acclaim, including from myself. Makes sense to me. And today we'll be taking a look at the classic that started it all, the original self-titled debut of Rayman, made by Ubisoft in 1995, back in the day before they were... complete cunts. But is this game as great as everyone seems to remember, and do I recommend you pick it up today against Rayman Origins and Legends? Well, let's find out as today we dive into Rayman! Tastes like baguettes and wine. So here we have an animated intro that for 1995 must have been mind-blowing for a PlayStation owner, even though this game did come out on Jaguar first, but yeah, well, well, we don't talk about the And we get a short and simple explanation on what's going on by this wizard guy. Hi, folks. Jesus! You wanna know what's going on? No, 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 I, I'm alright, thanks. Please get back in your hat and hat off. Anyway, we find out that in Rayman's world, the harmony and balance of the world is kept under wraps by this thing called the Great Brotoon, until one day it gets stolen by the evil Mr. Dark. Huh? The evil Mr. Dark. What? The evil Mr. Dark. That is the worst name for a bad guy I've ever heard in my life. What's next? Mrs. Immoral? Dr. Bad? Uncle Nasty? So... <sighs> Mr. Dark steals the great protoon and everyone turns evil ready to capture these things called electoons that looked after the protoon. So yeah, you need to rescue all of them if you want to restore balance as well as get the source of the balance returned. And then everything here takes a randomly dark turn for literally no reason at all. They definitely need a hero to save them now! Well, yeah, obviously. That's how it always goes, isn't it? That's just like those narrators of cartoony kids game intros. Everything's peachy, and then inevitably, out of nowhere, they always bring everything down. Like my trousers. Anyway, that's the plot, that's a terrible villain, and through the very unique way of travelling the map as you look down Mr. Dark's binoculars, and a little bit of a hole on the side. Rayman must travel through multiple worlds of wonderfully rich and vibrant colours, impeccable animations and really damn original ideas and environments as you break open six lectern cages in every stage, fight some of the coolest bosses with interesting mechanics you'll ever see in a 2D platformer, gain new power-ups and ultimately destroy the evil of Mr. Dark. And before we go any further, can I just talk about how Flippin' beautiful this game is! I mean, look at it! This game really pushes the PS1 sometimes, with not only the deeply detailed sprites and atmospheric as all hell backgrounds, but also with the amount of animation on each frame of the game. There is so much going on in this game from the start to the end, and there's so much to absorb, and it doesn't even play it that safe with its subject matter as a 2D platformer, and tries to be as original as possible all the time. Sure, you start in a forest, but then you quickly move on to a world made up of musical instruments, and then later on a world made up entirely of arts and crafts. Backing up this incredible visual design, which makes it one of the most standard out of memorable games of the era is the soundtrack, and holy shit, the soundtrack! Holy shit, the soundtrack! I may prefer Rayman 2 overall for its orchestral depth and complexity, but to poo poo Rayman 1's soundtrack would be insulting. Every theme is memorable or ambient whenever it needs it, and every theme has its place cemented perfectly into the gameplay, whether you want a mysterious atmosphere. A terrifying chase scene. Funky boss battle against a giant saxophone. A welcoming and jolly intro theme. A 
and even genuinely beautiful scores for stages to make them unbelievably relaxing. It's easily one of the top five soundtracks for the PS1 ever, if you ask me. And the only reason it didn't make my top 20 PS1 soundtracks list is because I honestly do prefer Rayman 2 and it was only one game per franchise, so shush. But hey, it's been a few years since I've even touched this game, so let's go right back to the beginning, play from the start, and see how it fares up today. Ah, this place brings back many memories. Pink Plant Woods. Nice, easy, and you even get that brilliant ending level jingle straight away. Yeah! <laughs> It seems weird that you can't punch yet though, I swear you could do that at this point, but eh, whatever. Jumping the vines, reading these lines, smashing the pines, and oh, Batilla the fairy has arrived to give me a new power. Ugh. Oh. Punching. Well, that's not really a power-up, and more of a thing that every breathing person with a fist could do up, but whatever, it is what it is. Now we can defeat enemies without needing to stick our tongues out at them. <laughs> I don't blame you, man. If I saw that, I'd rather drown too. And of course, now we can save our first electoons from this cage over here. Well, um... Rayman... God bless him, at least he tries. So yeah, Rayman can actually punch in this game, which you will need to get good with. And it's a punch that you can upgrade with speed and power as you play through the stages with these little pickups. My personal favourite thing to do with it is jump and then immediately hit punch after you leave the ground for an instantly fast and far-reaching punch attack, equaling what you'd have to do if you charge your punch from a standstill. And the moments that you can use your floating fist to grab lives from a distance adds that extra layer of gameplay to make the limited move set more satisfying. And another cool thing we can do here in this level is punch a fruit down, stick it on this guy's head, and then use him to grab a fist pack. Power up, so cool. This first level also introduces us to the concept of enemies with different behaviors. Some are completely indifferent, some can dodge you, some have block periods. These first few couple of stages are fantastic for learning the ropes and not being too easy. So I think I'll just ride this fruit like a motorboat before giving money to the limbless magician that vanishes into his hat and makes me spin in happiness. This game's fucking weird, man. Oh wow, bonus challenge. Get 13 tings. Tings, apparently. Me like tings. And here is where you'll introduce some of the strictest and pinpoint perfect jumps in platforming history with a character that isn't agile enough to make them. This is the first ever bonus challenge that you can play to grab an extra life, and even if you do it absolutely flawlessly, you can only just make it by a second. And I know it doesn't look so hard, but I've mastered this part of the game, I've played it so many times. You need to be so exact with your jump timing, it's almost criminal. You know, I think I should probably harp on the controls a little bit here, because honestly, they are far from the best I've ever played. They are snappier and responsive, absolutely, but pretty damn stiff and oftentimes way too clunky and slow for what the game expects you to do with them, especially later on in the game. Even from World 1, there are some jumps that are literally only possible with the most pinpoint accuracy and jumping from the very end of the platforms, which not only kills the flow, but also comes across as unfair a lot of the time, especially for a game marketed with kids in mind. And the perfect example of how bullshitty the control can get is with this part of Bandland in which these trumpets blow you left and right across slippery surfaces as you jump from one platform to the next up a huge shaft and you can't even be one pixel off or else fall all the way down again and start over, only to be blown off the slippery end way too fast or completely missed the platform that's skinnier than the gap between your feet. And look at this! I mean, what's even going on here? This isn't level design. Look! How do you expect people to do this? Tiny platforms with slippery surfaces and stiff controls over a one-hit kill pit. Well, anyway, level two starts introducing more stuff that you can use your moveset with to change how levels and obstacles work around you. And it's still relatively easy without being insulting, all before throwing in the first boss level, which is pretty damn easy, honestly, but can be slightly unpredictable unless you've played the game a million times times like myself. Oh, don't cry, Mr. Mosquito. Look, I've, I've punched you in the face a couple of times, but we're actually best friends. Yay! And now I even get to ride you around because you're my best friend ever. Bigger, yay! Um, Rayman, Rayman, why aren't you moving? Move, Rayman. Oh, no, 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 no! Oh, the control's locked up. Why? Damn you, broken copy of my game that's 21 years old and has no front cover. How dare you not be in pristine condition and make me die? But maybe the next Batilla power-up will be something exciting. Ah, the power to hang? Hang? I'm sure that most people with hands could do that, but I suppose we're talking about the same guy who couldn't punch a second ago. These power-ups are lame. Okay, to be honest, they do get way better as you go on, including a very situational ability to swing on rings, and much more useful ones in the form of hair gliding, and even dashing for faster movement and longer jumps. Gameplay is what you'd expect from this kind of game. 2D levels with oodles of exploration for extra goodies, rewards and hidden electrons you need to save, new mechanics and obstacles being introduced in every stage and having them needing to be used unconventionally to aid with the exploration, and little power-ups to pick up such 
such as increased hit points, which you can lose after every death, makes every stage feel worth looking around and more than just a platforming gimmicky challenge. I'd go as far as to say the level design here is more imaginative than most modern 2D Mario games, purely because it feels like every space is used for something that isn't just there for platforming around. And of course, the levels themselves feel built into the environment with not that many blocky designs in sight. Oh my, level 3 has other life forms here. What fascinating insight could be thrust upon me today? What? I'm sorry? Could you speak up a bit? In all seriousness, no, this is an awesome stage. One that not only has a tense chase with tense music, but one that also allows you to strategically place plants all over the stage to reach the top more efficiently. And this is followed by constantly smacking these goblin fuckers in the face because they're too short to hit under normal circumstances. <laughs> Whee! I gotta say, I love these checkpoints, by the way. That's that's charming as fuck. Mm, now, this this bonus level may be a little bit too tricky for this early on. This is a little bit ridiculous, I must admit. Foreshadowing. But I don't care. This is way too pretty, bouncy, awesomely composed, and tight to play all the other times that I... Oh, what is that? What is this thing doing in my game about a man with no limbs, Ubisoft? This may fit in with one of your creations in Unity, but it doesn't belong here. Look, it even burps up enemies. How much grosser could this be? Now I'm being chased by a big spiky fruit being carried by a tiny little mosquito. Rayman, slow down. I'm only a simple little boy. I can't take all of this shit at one time. And with that, World 1 is concluded with an awesome second boss that has many tricks up its sleeves. But we don't like those <laughs> red mosquitoes, so we're not going to be friends today. You can... Talk off. And then this follows on to an epic second world of musical instruments, evil saxophones, lightning eyes in the walls, okay, and many other tricks and surprises that only a game that looks like this can bring to the table. So there we go, it's a wrap everyone. It's all good, let's go home. Is what you might be thinking, but I'm not done yet. Now, if you want to know what makes me hate this piece of shit game, at the same time as love this incredible game, you only need to look at World 3 onwards. At the point you reach the mountain stage, is not only do the worlds get shorter, making it feel like they were running out of ideas, and not only do the designs really fucking stretch out to feel like they're going on forever and make replaying them to grab the rest of the electrons a complete bore, but my god, the difficulty. I'm not just saying this for the sake of whinging or anything, I'm telling you that I've been playing this game for 16 years, and for the life of me, I can never pass Picture City without losing every last continue I have, therefore making my save game useless and needing to start from the beginning again. The problem I've always had with Rayman 2 was that I found it way too easy, but here, the last half of this game throws some of the most unforgivable and brutal bullshit I've ever seen in my life. From huge jumps on tiny platforms, to enemies that appear at the end of the screen for no reason other than to knock you back into instant death, to a fucking scorpion boss fight that not only has one of the most ridiculous puzzles I've ever seen in a 2D game that requires looking up to solve, only to then throw you into an actual battle which I swear to god has completely random attacks from his tail that sometimes Sometimes follow you to a T and sometimes don't with no rhyme or reason. Moments of being chased but being given absolutely no space to escape. What the fuck is wrong with you, game? To a moment in which you can't see what's coming up on a swinging section so you'd never know not to grab this trap swing or else hit a thing that you can't avoid and die instantly. To another boss fight that quickly appears out of absolutely nowhere at the beginning and so could potentially kill you if you aren't ready to duck under it. And a following attack that is impossible to avoid in the middle of the boss. Look! How did that hit me? You can't run underneath them without getting hit and you can't crawl fast enough either, so how is this fair? Oh, and there are moments of being chased by a rising hazard, moving way too fast for reacting time unless you know exactly what's coming ahead of the game, and of course moments that you just cannot avoid getting hit anyway unless you know exactly what's coming up so that you can jump down. The last entire half of Rayman 1 is the very definition of trial and error, not even fair or fun trial and error. Look at the pencils! How are you supposed to avoid that bullshit? Oh. This here? This is level design. Look at this. Bouncy stuff everywhere and you have to somehow follow the tings. The designers must have had a very heavy lunch to think this was fucking acceptable. Oh, it's me favourite! Yeah! Have some fun on his pencil oh, wait, you have to punch these things? Oh, that's fine. Oh, oh, wait, I don't have the reflexes of a god, so now I'm dead. Toodly fucking pit. And the timing with jumping off of these swinging things is so specific, it's insane. I can't for the life of me figure out exactly when the hell to jump. I think it's not the top of your swing. I don't, I don't think that's the highest jump off point. I think it's just after the halfway point of the swing towards the direction you're going. Oh my god, fuck this. And it just gets worse and more unfun the more you play through it. And not only is the game not built around some of these platforming tasks with the slow and stiff Rayman movement, but it's also not built around fucking trial and error gameplay in the first place with the fact that you have only five continues on each new game before a total boot back to the title screen. And after each continue you go through, you start with only three hits and three lives, with little to no chance of gaining any other lives, or if there are any chances, increasingly harder and ridiculous ways to get extra lives. And in the latter portions of the game, none of this means
means anything anyway because of the constant one-hit bullshit from things you can't see and oops, you lose a life instantly, meaning three tries to not get hit once and you lose a continue every three tries. So assuming you have five continues at this point in the game, which may be unlikely, that's 15 tries to beat most of the last half of Rayman 1 with absolutely no mistakes. Whatever. I know people can complain about Super Meat Boy being trial and error, but that game's unlimited lives, no continues, tiny stages, fast aggressive gameplay, quick sprightly controls and instant reloading after death makes it extremely fair and fun. It's designed around that, and not even every stage is designed around trial and error, it's only a couple of them. And with this game, I'm not even looking for the damn elect tunes. I swear, I'm just trying to reach the ends of each stage, going the easiest routes and quickest ways possible, and it's still close to impossible and not fun at all. And of course, I still didn't beat my original record, and I still lost all my continues on Picture City, meaning that I now have to use codes to play the rest of the game. And yes, the code may have given me eight extra continues, but that means nothing when you have to fight the least fun, most random and most uninteresting boss in the whole fucking game, followed by the fact that you can't actually reach the last boss against Mr. Dark until you get every single Electune in the game. Wait. What did I just say? You, you can't, can't actually reach the last boss against Mr. Dark, Dark until, until you get, get every, every single Electune in the game. What? I could barely just about beat the second to last boss with 13 total continues, going the least complicated and non backtracky and non puzzle solvy routes to grab some of the trickiest Electunes in the game. And your reward for going that extra mile, that additional level of torture to get every single fucking collectible in the game is the gracious honor of being able to finish the fucking game. No, no. Oh God, no. You know what's something? I'm gonna use a code. I'm gonna look this up because I want to at least see if all of that bullshit is worth it at the end. Okay, nearly there, just finishing it off, hit OK, and uh, oh, it's the wrong password. Because the PAL version of this game doesn't have the code that allows you to reach the last level. This game gets fucking... Slorvist. Wow, oh, this was a very tough one, I must admit. But I think I must disagree with the unbridled critical acclaim this game got back in the day and just say this. Half of this game is some of the most bright, colourful, original, charming and kick-ass 2D platforming I've ever played, and the other half is a cesspit of hate and unfair bullshit that isn't fun to play whatsoever. And the gruelling task of beating the whole game 100% just for the privilege of playing the final level is horseshit on a level that I can't even imagine. I, like skyscraper horse shit, that, that kind of level. I don't envy any of you that managed to do this with five continues, especially if you were a kid drawn into its cute cartoony art style. In fact, if anything, I feel sorry for you, but there you go. Sorry if no one likes the fact that I love and yet hate this game at the same time, but you're on my video, so meh. If it's your birthday today, watching this video, happy freaking birthday to you. Please remember to stay beautiful. And even though I still find Rayman himself badass and I love many of his games, this first game in particular nearly drove me to throw away my lovely Rayman hoodie into a barbecue and I nearly followed in after it. Hello there everybody, thanks so much for watching this video and please stay tuned because the outtakes will be on in just a second but first I'd like to thank the Pixel Empire for sponsoring today's video where you can not only grab all of my official merchandise that's being updated very soon and not only can you grab high quality gaming, TV and movie wall prints from dozens of things like in relation to Rayman and 2D side scrollers, Mario or Kirby but if you use the discount code CADDY on checkout you can grab 15% off of any order at all, yes? Even from my merchandise and Pixel Empire print shirts and phone cases. So please Head to the description, check out the site, use the code, and enjoy wearing some lovely caddy swag. I'm so sorry, I'll never say that again. That was awful. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go now. Bye bye. Yeah, 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 yeah. Subscribe. And let me ask you a question. Do you have? No, that was me. I think. No. Wait, is it still filming? Yeah. <laughs> and let me ask you a question today. Uh... So there we go, everybody. It's a wrap, everyone. Let's go. Fuck. <laughs> Let's fuck. <laughs>